written words, and sometimes spoken. This week's topic is the comic book series Legion 89. Today I'll be discussing the first five issues. But let's get this one thing out of the way before we start. Legion 89 is named as such because of its tentative ties to Legion of Superheroes, and the 89 is actually the year it came out. Before you ask, yes, when the year changes in reality, the title changes. So in 1990, it was called Legion 90, then 91, and so forth. Legion 89 is one of those oddities that's lost in time. As a sort of precursor to the Legion of Superheroes, although that comic priest dated it by 31 years, think of it as a Doom Patrol or Alpha Flight. It's not in the spotlight, but it's kind of adjacent. I really enjoy this aspect of the comic. See, when your comic isn't noticed, you can do things like have a main character kill another main character, only to have them resurrected later on. When you're flying under the radar like this, you can have members like Lobo join. What? <laughs> if you're wondering about these names like Lobo and in the future when I tell you other names, just know that this team is kind of like an intergalactic A team, or the equivalent of a B team. The first comic starts out as Brill Docks, the Hannibal of the group, visiting his home planet with a team. The only problem is this planet is ruled by machines, and the pe people there live in peaceful ignorance. They don't know what freedom actually means. The wayward team is shot down and imprisoned, much to the constant complaints of Gary and Beck, the team's pilot and stand-in for face. The fact that Grill knew that this was going to happen and accounted for it doesn't phase me. Cut to the Durian in the group, a shapeshifter, who breaks them out, and then the muscle of the group, Strata, female BA for Atlas, and the magic user, Larissa Mallor knock some heads and don't take any names. There's another team member, Stealth, who is actually the one who gets all crazy, mates with real docs, and then kills them. Spoiler alert, hey, these things happen. Anyways, the first comic ends on an amazing cliffhanger where the entire building is wiped off the face of the planet. Well, you know what? The next issue, Vril Docs accounted for that building to be destroyed, and they weren't even in that building at the time. Okay, I know, I know. He's supposed to be this really smart guy. I mean, he's Brainiac's quote-unquote son. But really, he accounted for everything? It really feels like those 50s shorts where they ran before the actual movie. I love it so much. It's pulpy, campy. And it's played almost seriously enough that you have to admire the writers and creators for having the guts to go this route. Of course, the team eventually make it to the core of the planet's network and free the people. But at what cost? Another cliffhanger! Well, as the third issue opens up, we see a lot of fires and chaos. And that's what happens when you liberate people from their comfortable tyranny. Speaking of that, the gang just up and leaves the planet to recover on its own. Classic. And the computers that once ruled, they have one more trick up their sleeve. Dun dun dun. They escaped using an organic body that's the ultimate beast of a specimen. And they go on a ra vengeful rampage to kill the group. They escape somehow. It's not important. But they capture the attention and ire of Lobo. Cliffhanger time. The fourth comic is a bunch of Lobo shenanigans. If you don't know who he is, he's odd. And it ends up with Lobo beating the crap out of everything. You know, because he's supposed to be cool, but he's just odd. <laughs> the final panel has Real Doc saying he's going to make Lobo an offering. Really? You're going to use that line? Anyways, it's another cliffhanger. You see the pattern? 
The fifth and final comic that I'm going to be talking about, the gang goes to a crime planet to reshape it into Real Drex's version of Paradise. You see, the police there are in the pay of the criminals, and Vril wants to change that. What does he do? Well, he first has Lobo beat the crap out of all the police, and then he calls a meeting. Cliffhanger! Oh, okay, that's the last one isn't so much as a cliffhanger as a segue to their next adventure of storming the uh, the gang, the, you know, bad guys, and with the newly reformed police, and taking them down, taking down the gangsters. Anyway, I'm done with this thing. Watch this if you want a pulpy adventure with several cliffhangers, with fun and witty remarks, with sometimes outrageous things happening and then kind of explained away. What? Please read this if you want an all around good time with no worries or deep meanings. Just a great story set in space full of amazing wonder. I will mention one more thing. I love the style of the comic. It's uh, a 1980s fair, and that's my favorite art style. So if you like that art style, you might like this. Anyways, try it, pick it up, eh, or don't. <laughs> See you next time.